Hey my friends, it's David Chan and this is day number 9 of my 30 days of Irish Development Challenge where in 30 days I challenge myself to document the journey of learning to code and building an iOS app or feature of an app in 30 days. If you would love to join this challenge, just subscribe to the channel so that every time I release a new video documenting this journey and the tutorial, you receive notifications as well. And also, click the link below this video if you want to receive all the resources for this uh, challenge and getting all the videos that I do in this challenge. So today challenge, we extend the feature of last day. Is last day we learned how to use core location in iOS to get in the current location of the user from the GPS. Now we want to do is from a coordinate from the CL coordinate to the coordinate. Right, we have the latitude and longitude. We want to translate that into an actual address. Right, we have three lines of address. We have street uh, line, and then we have street number two. Then we have the state, the zip code, and the country. So that is what we want to do today. Download the resources that I prepare for you right below this video. And let's get into the demo. Yesterday, as part of my 30 days of Swift challenge, I created an app that uses the phone's GPS so that we get the user's current location. Uh, yesterday, we were able to display the user's latitude and longitude. That's cool, and it's a great step in learning iOS development and the frameworks in UIKit and especially core location. But in real life, those weird latitude and longitude numbers, they don't mean anything to the user. So we human need something like a readable street address. So let's do that today. First, download the starter project right below this video. So uh, where, or you can start where we left off in yesterday challenge. Number one, I'm going to create the geocoder variables inside our location view controller. Um, right below here, let's have a mark called, let's have a comment called geocoder like this. And the first thing we'll do is a let geocoder is CL geocoder and we'll create it immediately. The reason why we use a let here is because we will not change it later on. And if you use it var, that's okay. But if you don't change it, if you use let, it will help the compiler to kind of like run your code faster. So here next, we need a place mark. So CL place mark, and that is optional. This place mark will hold the information that will turn from a location, a coordinate into a place mark. And from this place mark, we will be able to get the information like the street, the city, the country, the um, state or the province, okay? Then because geocoding a location, it takes some time, it's not immediate. So it's just like when we update location, we get the user current location. We also want to have a mark that uh, has a flag that keeps track of are we updating the geocoding or not. So I'm going to have a var is performing uh, reverse geocoding or not. And by default, that is false. Then lastly, let's have the last geocoding error to be an error like this. Next up, in find location, in find location, uh, what we did here is three steps. Right. Number one is we get the user permission to do that. If there isn't any permission to use location service, then we'll report the user uh, that there is uh, the location services was denied. You should be able uh, to go to settings and enable it. Then three is we will start or we start finding the location. Right, so if we are updating location, we'll stop the location manager. Otherwise, we will reset the location and the location error, and then we'll start the location manager. So before we start the, the location manager to find a new location, I will also reset the place mark and reset the last geocoding error so that let, uh, next time that we have the location, won't be able to kind of like use fresh data, okay? 
So next, let's perform a geocoding. The best place to kind of like translate a new location into readable address is immediately after we have a new location. That is where location manager did update locations is for. So let's change this method into this before we uh, right after we update the UI, I'm going to check if the location is not nil. If it is not nil, then we'll check if it is not performing a reverse geocoding or not. Then let's print out something like, uh, let's print out, we are starting, start performing geocoding. Then we'll turn the is performing geocoding into true because we are about to do that. Then now we'll call the geocoder dot reverse. It's not reserve, but reverse geocode location. And we use the completion handler like this. Okay. Uh, maybe we just need this. So here we'll pass in a location. Then this completion handler, it will pass us an array of place marks, then an error. Inside this block, we'll put the last uh, geocoding error into the error here. We'll store that. Then if the error is nil and we have the place mark, is this place marks to make sure that it is not nil, then we'll do, we'll just to make sure we want to make sure that the place mark is also not empty, right? Maybe it's, so this is kind of like um, really protective programming here. We already checked that this place mark, right? This place mark right here is not nil. So very much likely that it is not going to be empty, but still we should check that, okay? Uh, so location here, I need to ungrab that because we already checked that location here is not nil, right? So here, uh, after we check the, everything is good, let's store the place mark to be our place marks dot last and we ungrab that. Otherwise, self dot place mark is going to be nil, right? Then we'll, after we done that, let's turn the is performing geocoding into false and we'll go also that updates UI. Cool. All right. So that's awesome. We're able to uh, very very straightforward do the from location. We use the geocoder reverse geocode location. We turn that into a place mark. Pretty much it all handled by call location for us. So as you can see in this closure, we get a new. Uh, we'll call the updates UI. Right. So it's time to update the address into the labels. So let's go into update UI here. If we have a location, then let's put those information up. So if let place mark is a place mark. So it means that we do have a place mark. Then I'm going to turn address label dot text to be the get address from a place mark like that. Now, where is this method comes from? Well, that method is from a function, a method that we are going to write. So get okay, address from place mark is a CL place mark. This is a helper method that we will implement. Okay. Now, uh, before we implement that, before we implement that, uh, this is going to return string. Before we implement this method, let's handle the case that there is not. So I'll say if, if we are performing, right? If we are performing, performing geocoding, then we'll do address label that text to be uh, searching for address, something like that, right? Else, if the last geocoder is not nil, then we'll do address label dot text to be error finding a valid address okay otherwise let's do address to be address not found 
Cool. All right. So this just to make sure that we will update the label according to the kind of like the state of our implementation. So the get address here. Let's do this. Uh, firstly, this get address. We want the address to be something like this, right? So let's say we want to have one, two, three test streets. I'm going to use the address in the United States. Okay. If you have like your local implementation, then you should do that as well. So uh, test address, and then we'll have the city name, and then the state, right? And then the zip code, and then the country, something like that. Okay. So here. Um, because because we have three lines, so let's line number one is an empty string. If let the street one is place mark dot sub the rule fair like this. So line one plus equals street one plus an, uh, a space, right? So if let street two, we want to have the street address two dot the rule fair like this. And then we'll do line one plus equal straight two. All right. Next line two is again an empty string. Then if let the city is place mark dot locality. Locality. Then we do line two plus equal city plus an a space. Then let's if let this uh, state Oh, you know what? Let's do it like this, All right? And then let's do state is uh, equals. Oh, this should be state or province because some like in some areas it is province in some country that is province, right? But in the states we have states. So place mark dot administrative area. Then we do line two plus equal state or province plus like this All right so finally we have the zip code like that so if let the zip code or if let postal code is place mark dot postal code and then we do line two plus equal postal code all right so finally line number three let's do is an empty string like this. Then we do if let the country is place mark dot country. This is pretty straightforward. Then line three plus equal country, right? Then finally we'll return the string line one plus line two plus line three like that. But if we do it like this, everything will be on the same line. So what you want to do is a new line character and then plus and then we pass like this, okay? So, oh, line three. So this will give us three distinct lines. All right, so now let's run the project to see how it looks like. Here we go. Firstly, firstly I'm going to simulate a location in London, for example. Oh, let me sim simulate in uh, San Francisco. Here we go. And then we find location. It says new location. And it has a, an address here, but the address here, it is not really nicely done. So I'm going to, let's say I want to drag this thing way down like this, right? And then we have some space here. And then let's do lines is three. That's good. So now let's see how it looks like. All right, so let's simulate location, San Francisco find location and boom we have that right so we have the street address that's cool uh san francisco's california 94102 and then united states all right guys it's david tron i hope that you enjoyed this video this tutorial as much as i enjoy creating it for you if you do can you do me two favors number one subscribe to the channel so that every time i release a new video training you get a notification that new video is out 
And number two is what I would love to give you is my new free video series where in that series I share with you number one, if I start all over again and I need I have a goal of learning to build apps and become a developer and so that after a few weeks of learning, after a few months of learning, I become a job ready developer. I share with you my five steps to do that, um, not only for myself when I work when I started without any prior programming experience but also from working with my clients and helping other students, other people to learn to code through my channel, through my work at Wally. I share with you my step by step in that video as well. And then number two, uh, I share with you the step by step what I call the 6x11 developers learning formula where I share with you the frameworks, the tools, the steps, the things that you need to learn and the apps that you want to build so that you build a great portfolio of apps to become a job ready developer. Whether you want to get a job in the tech industry as an iOS developer or you want to become a highly paid freelancer, that will help you give you the roadmap that will take if I start all over again. So if you want to do that, just click the link below this video, enter your name and email so I can send you that resources for free. So until next time my friend, i see you in the next video. As always, go out there every single day of your life, learn new things, craft your ideas and contribute to the world. i see you next time.